In the 1920s, Argentina had a per capita GDP of 80% of the U.S. It was on track to beat us. And then they came up with this whole great idea of socialism. Él es el que educa. Por eso triunfan ideas de justicia social, o de igualdad. Además, ¿qué es justo o injusto? ¿Cómo puede haber igualdad de oportunidades? ¿Puede haberla? Nunca puede haber igualdad de oportunidades. I fundamentally disagree on the distinction between capital and labor. Capital is just a term for money. If you're talking about money, money does not grow from the ground. How do you think he will rank in the history of economic theory or thought? So let's say you own a pencil factory, I'm a worker in that pencil factory. You can have all the machinery, all you can buy all the raw materials you want, but without me and presumably many others like me to assemble the pencils, all you would have is a pile of wood, yellow paint, graphite, rubber, and aluminum. Okay. And that is worth less than the pencil when you try and sell it. And yet all of that value added by labor, apart from the wages that you give me, if, if all you, if all that putting the pencil together requires is basic use of your prefrontal cortex, then yes, your labor is alienable at lower rates than if you are a doctor. That's not the fault of the person who owns the machinery. But if all, but if the work, but if you didn't have workers like me and your pencil factory, and you were just one man, but I so do. I have millions of people who are willing to do that voluntarily for me. Uh, a question: How do you answer to to the Democrats if you tell them that people are flocking other nations away from socialism to the United States? And why are we trying to push socialism? If it was so bad, why are these people leaving those countries? Well, I mean, no, because it's like the heroin. Like I just said earlier, once you give people something, it's so hard to take it away, and it just gets worse and worse and worse. It piles up, and then you get Venezuela. This is a great little fact you can tell people. In the 1920s, Argentina had a per capita GDP of 80% of the U.S. It was on track to beat us. And then they came up with this whole great idea of socialism. History is full of a thousand lessons on it. But once you go down that path, it is so hard to come back because now you have to, you have to start taking things away from people and telling them, hey, it's, um, things have changed. La igualdad es un concepto matemático, no es un concepto de ciencia social. Esos son los grandes errores de las ciencias sociales es incorporar conceptos de las ciencias físicas y naturales al ámbito de la política y de la economía. Eso es un gran error. No hay igualdad, pero estas filosofías pretenden que tiene que haber una justicia. El mundo no es justo ni injusto. Justo o injusto es si es algo deliberado. Es justo que haya gente sana y gente enferma. No, no es injusto, es una desgracia, pero no es culpa de nadie. Si unas personas son más inteligentes como otras, eso es justo y justo. Una modelo gana dinero por, ser, por la cara bonita. Y es justo y justo que ustedes sean inteligentes y otros no sean tanto. Cuando hablamos de reparto y redistribución, es, eh, la inteligencia, la belleza, la salud, el carácter, son heredados. Los ricos en un país no son un problema. Los ricos en un país son una bendición. Mientras más gente rica hay en un país, mejor. ¿Por qué? Porque el rico tiene la capacidad de ahorrar. Y con el ahorro se financia la inversión y con la inversión el crecimiento. Y si el país crece hay más trabajo. Si hay más trabajo y más competencia en el trabajo, los sueldos suben. Y si hay más gente trabajando y más gente consumiendo, pagan impuestos para que el Estado pueda hacer más cosas. Entonces uno se pregunta, ¿pero por qué es que en muchas partes del mundo hay desempleo? es que los arreglos no son libres y voluntarios. Entonces vienen políticos y vienen legisladores que dicen ¿cómo? Eh, el salario es de cuatro, esto es una cosa infrahumana, no se puede tolerar, tiene que ser por ley de ocho. Y ahí lo dejan sin empleo. Entonces en un lugar muy pobre, en un lugar muy miserable, intuimos y sabemos que los salarios van a ser muy bajos y en un lugar muy próspero los salarios van a ser muy altos. Pero nunca hay tema de desempleo si no fuera por los malditos impuestos al trabajo, digamos que en nombre de las conquistas sociales, en fin, se le imponen a la gente y lo dejan sin trabajar. If you're just one person trying to assemble pencils, you're not going to get very far. You need workers. Capital needs labor infinitely more than labor needs capital. That's why you have worker cooperatives where the workers I are the I fundamentally ones. disagree on the distinction between capital and labor. Capital is just a term for money. If you're talking about money, money does not grow from the ground. Money only has value because it was traded for labor at one point or the products of labor. So if I take my money and I 
I buy machinery. I have invested my labor in doing that because I didn't get the money from nowhere. Even if I got it from my parents, my parents didn't get the money from nowhere. The problem that I'm seeing in, in what you're saying is you have still failed. If, if what you're talking about is a system of volunteerism, you still have not named any area in which we disagree, and yet you're telling me that you're a socialist and I'm a free marketer. So one of us has got this wildly wrong, and I'm pretty sure it's not me. <laughs> Cuando, cuando redistribuimos, ¿por qué redistribuimos solo una cosa? ¿Justicia social a qué se refiere? ¿A redistribuirlo todo? ¿O, o redistribuir solo lo que nos conviene? Cuando hablamos de redistribuir, solo hablamos de redistribuir casi siempre renta o dinero. La inteligencia, por ejemplo, se iguala o se potencia. Si ustedes son listos, ya de pequeños, mejor escuela. Mejor escuela, mejor universidad. Mejor universidad, mejores becas de posgrado, mejores oportunidades para ganar dinero. Ahí la desigualdad, al que es listo, hago solo potencia más. Hagamos al revés. Al más burro, ¿cuál es la mejor universidad del mundo? Lo mandamos allí. Es mi pico. Y cuando acabe la mejor universidad, o lo hacemos más. Al más listo, ¿cuál es la peor escuela que hay en el, en el peor barrio de aquí de la ciudad de Guatemala? ¿Les parece absurdo? ¿Por qué la renta no les parece absurdo? How do you think he will rank in the history of economic theory or thought? As a man with a great many ideas who knew very little economics, there's little the two. So he knew nothing but Marshallian economics. He even knew very little about 19th century economic history. His interests were very largely guided by aesthetic appeal. He would know nothing about Henry Thornton. He, would knew, he knew little about Ricardo, of course, the famous things. He could have found any number of antecedents of his inflationary ideas in the 1820s and 1830s, and when I told him about it, it was all new to him. We hear from the American steel industry that uh, in Japan, for instance, uh, <coughs> steel producers are producing at less than cost with support of the government so as to keep employment up there, and as a result, the American steel industry here is, is not going to be able to compete, they're, so they're going to shut down and we're going to have higher unemployment here. What, what is your answer to that? Uh, well, they, that's a very, uh, a very good question and it's a very easy answer. Let us suppose for a moment that the Japanese flood us with steel. That will reduce employment in the American steel industry, no doubt. However, it will increase employment elsewhere in America. We will pay for that steel with dollars. What will the Japanese do with the dollars they get for the steel? They aren't going to burn them. They aren't going to tear them up. If they would, that would be best of all. Because there's nothing we can produce more cheaply than green pieces of paper. <laughs> But they're not going to do that. They're not stupid. They're smart people. They're going to use those dollars to buy goods and services. They're going to spend them. In the process of spending them, they may spend them directly in the United States. And that directly provides employment in the United States. They may spend them in Brazil or in Germany or in China or anywhere else. But whoever gets them in turn is going to spend them. So the dollars that we spend for the steel will find their way back to the U.S. as demand for U.S. goods and services. Los ricos no son un problema, señores socialistas. Los que son un problema son los pobres. Y a los pobres hay que sacarlos de la pobreza. Y se les saca de la pobreza con trabajo, con educación y con oportunidades. No se les saca de la pobreza con socialismo. No se les saca de la pobreza hundiéndolo más en la pobreza. Under capitalism, when you as the owner of the factory, you give me a wage. All, all the additional profit above the, uh, made from selling the pencils all ultimately goes to you or the investors. The, right. Under socialism, those people are the workers. And the example I give, again, is cooperative enterprise. No, those are the people who are investing the risk. So if they carry the risk, then they get the benefit. If the company goes bankrupt and this guy has to pay off all of his debts, the worker may lose his job, but he's not the one who's going to incur the debt of having gone bankrupt. Okay, it is the investor who pays the downside, who invested in all the machinery, who sunk millions of dollars into making your labor productive. Because guess what? Your labor is without that machinery. Gunk. Nothing. Do you mean he didn't have the kind of mind that makes for first-rate oh, yeah. economists? Oh, he had. I mean, if he had given his whole mind to economics, he could have become a master of the economics of the existing body. But there were certain part of economic theory which he, had, which he had never been interested in. He had never thought about the theory of capital. He was very shaky on, even on the theory of international trade. He was well informed on contemporary monetary theory, but even there, 
that he did not, not know such things as Henry Thornton or Vixel. And of course his great effect was he didn't read any foreign language except French. The whole German literature was inaccessible to him. He did curious enough review Mises' book on money, mm -hmm. but uh, later admitting that in German he could only understand what he knew already. El intelectual de izquierdas o el intelectual así, ¿qué es lo que sabe? Sabe escribir. Y seguramente es muy listo de forma abstracta. ¿Qué es lo que no sabe hacer? Ganar la plata. No se me explico. Y él le da rabia que siendo tan listo como es y sabiendo tanta filosofía y tanta teoría política y tanta cosa, que un carnicero, un vendedor de carne de puerco, gana más dinero que él. ¿Qué quiere? Quiere un mundo que esté ordenado por qué criterios de intelectuales. Quiere un mundo en que sea él el que gobierne. No se me explico. Por tanto, critica o defiende la Igualdad de rentas, pero la desigualdad en las inteligencias. ¿Pero cuál es su ventaja? Él es el que educa, él es el que habla en las televisiones y en las radios. Por eso triunfan ideas de justicia social o de igualdad. Para más, ¿qué es justo o injusto? ¿Cómo puede haber igualdad de oportunidades? ¿Puede haberla? Nunca puede haber igualdad de oportunidades. No tenemos las mismas oportunidades en un sitio que en otro. Las oportunidades no son oportunidades, son oportunidades para algo. Por ejemplo, imaginen que uno de ustedes tiene voz para cantar ópera china. En la, en la ciudad de Guatemala es improbable que se la descubran. Entonces ustedes, a lo mejor grandísimas cantantes, no lo pueden aprovechar todo eso. Es más, nunca lo sabrán. Es justo eso. Pues no es como es. Overall, total employment will not be affected. But overall, the American consumer will be benefited because he will get the steel more cheaply and the goods made from the steel more cheaply than he otherwise would. That's the benefit to the American consumer. I urge on those people who think there's some sense to the steel industry argument to consider it in a more absurd setting. You very often bring out the logic of an argument by carrying it to an extreme. You know, you could have a great employment in, uh, in the city of Logan, Utah, of people growing bananas bananas and hothouses. If we had a high enough tariff on the import of bananas, it could become profitable to build hothouses and grow, uh, grow uh, bananas in those hothouses. That would give employment. Would that be a sensible thing to do? If that isn't sensible, then neither is it sensible to artificially restrict the import of steel. Now, with respect to the charge that the Japanese government is subsidizing the export of steel, number one is very dubious that it's true, but suppose it were true. Then that would be a foolish thing for the Japanese to do from their own point of view. But why should we object to their giving us foreign aid? <laughs>